Hi everybody, this is Christine Bertram and I am coming to you live from the Hive on a Wednesday. It's November 2nd. Hi Jay Shante. Hi Becky Rohrer. Hi Patricia Thomas. Thank you so much. <laughs> the hard work does pay off. Hi Loretta Shep. You guys, it's crazy, but everybody keeps congratulating me and I appreciate the congratulations, but I tell everybody that this is a team effort. <laughs> I could not be where I am without having an amazing team of um, Be Happy Stampers, an amazing team of customers, amazing team of um, helpers. I mean, just amazing team of my family. <laughs> so all the hard work pays off, but it definitely is a lot of um, help that goes into making it. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Sharon Land. Hi, Doris Munson and Linda Hunt. So it was an amazing year. Thank you, Jay, for being proud of, um, proud of, so proud to be part of your circle of stampers. Yes, you, that's exactly it. It is my circle of stampers that have gotten me to be 20 in the United States, which is amazing. Um, yeah. So my mom said to me this morning, we were working on kidding up the lights of glow class. Um, and it's, sorry, I was reading a message that popped up there. Normally messages don't pop up there, but it, it did. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> so, um, so we were kidding up. Hi, Melody Miller. Hi, Mary Hartman. Hi, Sherry Martin and Sandy Wicklander and Jean Maxwell. Whoop, whoop. So we were kidding up lights that glow. And I was talking to my mom about it a little bit. And she's like, so what's your goal for next year? 15. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> last year, I didn't have it in my head to set a higher goal than what I had. But as the year kept progressing, I thought, well, why not shoot for 20, right? Hi, Feline. Hi, Randy. Thanks for sharing. You guys, we talked about it a little bit yesterday about not getting notifications. So what we went through is um, you need to click on your little bell. If you guys aren't getting notifications yet at this point, um, um, I got Donna Gruski's message as well. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer Jones. She got her card package today. Whoop, whoop. Awesome. Just in time for class on Friday. So that's exciting. I mailed that on Monday, I believe. So that was good. Um, two day shipping. I think that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, so we kitted up three of the four cards. Hi, Cheryl Thomas. Hi, Penny Powell. Hi, Sarah Merchant. We were talking about, but that's not what we were talking about, you guys. <laughs> I got distracted there. Um, we were talking about the notifications. So if you're not getting notifications yet off of YouTube for when I go live, make sure you have your settings set to have the bell turned on. Click on the bell and make sure your settings are to all. Um, if you want to see all the times I go live. Hi, Francis Rodriguez. Hi, Nicola Herrick. Hi, Pat Mater. And so, yeah, so you guys see some flowers in the back. These got delivered to me today. Um, they were sent to me. I'll bring them a little closer so you guys can see them. So, hi, Catherine Healy. So these are what I got today. They came from my upline, Kelly Atchison. Which way? I gotta go this way. Kelly Atchison sent me these. I don't wanna tilt them too much because I don't want the water to spill out, but very, very pretty and in time for fall. And she said she was very proud of me as well. Yay. So I was looking at the rankings. She was teasing me yesterday because the overall rankings, um, you don't have your kit yet, Feline said, just watching today. Um, I wonder when your kit got mailed out, Feline, because I would have thought that it should have been there by now. I know a big package went out to you last week, but you are on the West Coast, so maybe it's delayed a little bit. Um, the kitties are going doing great, Nicole. <laughs> um, we So every, every day now, so we got a Monday night. So Monday night, they just stayed in the living room in the kitchen, um, and then the bathroom is where we put the litter boxes. And then um, what did we do? Oh, yesterday, uh, after I was done with my class, I went upstairs to cut paper. And so I had them upstairs with me where my um, design and where I cut paper. And then um, this morning, uh, we were sleeping at 6.30. We heard squeak, 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 like meow, meow, meow outside the door because we had the, the bedroom door shut because we didn't know if we'd be able to get sleep or not. And so I looked at Tyler and he looked at me and we're like, yep, bring them in. <laughs> so we exposed them to another part of the house. So um, little by little, they're getting acclimated. Um, my mom was here this morning and she went in and just started loving on them. So she is very familiar with my mom, or I should say they both are very familiar with my mom because that's where we got them from was my parents' farm. So they're doing great. Um, I have the bell turned on and no notifications. So even though you have the bell turned on, you might have to make sure your settings are accurate because 
your bell could be turned on and your notifications could be turned off. So um, we we showed this yesterday. Oh, I should probably charge my phone too. We showed this yesterday um, just in case, um, in case people didn't see this. I'm going to bring it up so you guys can see it. And I've got to look at this at my friend Jennifer's um, email or we email YouTube um, just to show you guys because on my account, it doesn't show. So because it's my account. <laughs> so let me just show you in case you guys um, know or don't know, there's a little bell. And so once you click on the bell, there's a line through my bell for Jennifer's because I don't want to be notified every time. But you guys got to make sure it's not set to none. So you have all personalized or none. And so if you haven't set on none, that might be why you're not getting um, why you're not getting notifications. Just a little FYI. So I'm going to bring this up so I can chat with you guys via here as well. Okay. So we have, I can turn my volume down. We have um, the wonderful world class with you guys today. And so I've got a little bit of crazy going on right here. Um, it won't be crazy once we get started, but in case you guys were wondering, this is the light, the glow class that we're working on kidding up today. It's next week, Thursday online or Wednesday in person. And then it's not till the 19th for the weekend. And that's because we've on stage in there. So if you guys need to get signed up for this, let me know. I think I have about 70 signed up and I ended up kidding up. We're going to be kidding a hundred. Um, so there's, there's about 20 to 30 left, right? So if you still want to get on the list, there is still time for this. All you need for this class are sentiments. So, um, and we use the sentiments from the brightest glow or Christmas glow or whatever the lights of glow stamp sets are. So um, that's what we were working on this morning, um, in case you're wondering. Um, and then just a little recap too, real quick before I get going into Wonderful World. The next time I'll be live then is not tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is my date night. <laughs> and so um, we switched it around. So I had class yesterday. I've got online class today and I'll have online class on Friday. So just because I'm not here on Thursday doesn't mean we're not having class. <laughs> so you guys have lots to watch this week. Um, what we're going to do on Friday is the stamp -a stack and I'll be making one each of the cards from the stamp -a stack. I do not have any left. Sandy got my last kit. She reached out to me last night and it is in the mail already. So I don't have any of this one left. So, but that's what we're doing on Friday. Um, so, and then I have it in person on Sunday and Monday. Um, hi, Lynn Beasley popping in to say hi. All right. Catch the replay later. So, no problem. You guys, that is what's awesome about YouTube and Facebook is that you could always watch the replays later on when you have time in your life to, to watch them. <laughs> so um, and do roll call while we're at it. Uh, we have a really big class today. Again, you guys, you love the wonderful world. I did too. It was from a celebration that was in July and August. And so you could get the stamp set and the paper as a free item. And I had extra paper. So Chris and I decided to make up some cards and ended up being 12. <laughs> so we're doing 12 cards today. Yesterday was 20. So I thought I better get like the ball, uh, the ball rolling here and start on class. <laughs> so we'll talk about things as we go. But I have a mixture of in person and online because I kept track of this class by who needed paper and who didn't need paper. So that's, I'm just going to start at the top and um, I'm going to end up announcing, I have about eight people that are coming in person tomorrow to do this class with me at one. So we're just going to roll through the entire list. And when we do the door prize drawing, everybody will be included in it. <laughs> so perfect. All right. So we have Barbara Moynan, Lynn Beasley, Tracy Gruby, Carolyn Ketchmark, Sharon Henson, Kathy King, Helen Chase, Sharon Land, Pat Thomas, Pat Mater, Pat Hecker, and Patsy Roberts. All four of you girls signed up in the same, like, all in a row. And then Tammy, Tammy Steckling, Becky Rohrer, Gail Kane, Mary Carls, Doris Munson, Deanna Stell, Leslie McMinn, Sue Spiegner. And then we have, in person, I have a group tomorrow, is Annette Rollin, Diane Bogenhagen, Judy Immel, Barb Collins, Jill Butzine, and Elaine Rebeck, along with Karen Wettstein. Whoa, wow. So that's awesome. We have a good group tomorrow. And then um, also more people online are Christina Heiser, Becky Gandolfo, Donna Gushki, Sherry Everett, Sarah Merchant, Suzanne Neal. Hi, Jean Terwilliger. <laughs> Catch the replay later. You betcha. Um, so... We had Suzanne Neald, Anne Diaquisto, Cindy Runtree, Betty Pyle, 
Christina Bernards. And Christina, when you're watching, just I want to let you know your happy mail arrived today. So I got you logged for that. So yay. Um, Sue Somerville, Karen Cotton, Chris Dudarenke will also be here tomorrow. Uh, Julie Bierschbach, Latokia Trigg, Linda Hunt, uh, Paula Bringman, Barbara Gabi, Lori Baxter, Jeannie Parker, Sandy Wicklander, Shirley Malarkey, Cheryl Thomas, and Francis Rodriguez. So all in all, you guys, between in-person and online right now, we have 40, nope, 52 people taking this ad hoc class that was added on as a afterthought, like, cause there's no time during celebration to make more cards, right? <laughs> so we found time a couple weeks ago to make up these cards. So you guys, it was awesome, 52 people. So it helped to um, use some of the, the designer paper that I had that was extra and the stamp sets. And so the, the class is actually designed where you're not really even needing the stamps, the Wonderful World stamps. So like it was an extra special gift for people that, um, oh, I forgot to turn my volume off. And that's Tyler calling. <laughs> so I have to tell him I'm in class. So, um, so it was, it was awesome. So not, the pricing wasn't really based off of having the stamp set or not. Right. But I did give a discount of $10 to those people that did have the designer paper to help because you could use your own paper and it allowed me to have, um, make up more kits because I couldn't have enough paper for everybody. Uh, so I'm just going to tell him I'm doing class right now <laughs> so he doesn't wait uh, right now. Okay. Okay. So that's a little bit about the class. So you don't necessarily need to have the Wonderful World stamps. What we did pull in though is the sending, nope, what is it? The, um, it is the stamp set called Sending Smiles. And so you don't have to have Sending Smiles either. You could have any other sentiments that you want to use. No problem. So, um, so that's awesome about that. So Hold me true at the end. We're going to do a door prize drawing and we'll probably do two because we had almost 60 people. So I think we'll do two as well. So, okay. Are you guys ready? Okay. <laughs> I did email the PDF tutorial to those who paid for the class. Um, last week, Thursday, it got emailed out so that you could work ahead. Um, I also emailed it out to those attending in person so that they could work on having their flowers cut before they got here. So, so that's awesome. Hi, Mary Schreiber. Good afternoon to you as well from Windy Southwest Minnesota. Nice. <laughs> so um, hi, Diane Sanders. Happy hump day to you as well. Um, hi, Hildy. Hi, Sarah Merchant. Hi, Karen Cotton. I don't know if you guys snuck in after I was doing roll call probably. Uh, so the PDF tutorial is it was emailed to everybody last week thursday who registered so those 52 people right so after this live now that i have the um the youtube link i add it to the pdf tutorial and that's when i put it for sale in my online store and so it'll be in my online store maybe by tomorrow morning or so and if you want it you can get it um, because it is 12 cards i did increase the price slightly uh, because it's not like i normally do four cards in a pdf tutorial for ten dollars and because it's 12 cards i did it for 20. so that it <laughs> i'll be honest with you it took me a lot longer to write that pdf tutorial than it does for four because it was four different or it was 12 cards in in it so you're getting three times the amount of cards for only double the price. So um, you can also get it free with an order. I think I have an, a minimum of $40 order if you want. So know that that PDF tutorial will be out there in case anybody's looking for it. Um, I'll be honest with you. I was driving to Louisville, Kentucky on Thursday with my brother. And while he was driving in the morning for three hours, I wrote this PDF tutorial from the car. And thank goodness I had internet when we got to the Indianapolis Zoo because I could email it to Karen Westine and Karen proofread it for me. And then that she had it back to me by the time I got to the hotel on Thursday night. And then Thursday night, I could email it out to everybody. So this was a team effort as well. <laughs> oh, thanks, Feline. I appreciate hearing that. Hi, Donna Simmer. So, um, so... Yeah, we did as as good of a job as we could writing this. And I'll tell you, I wrote the Santa's mem the Santa Express memories and more in the car too. You know, I get car sick, but luckily I did not get car sick for those three hours while I was writing the tutorial. <laughs> so, you know, well, you got to get things done and that didn't get done before I left, but I was happy I got it out to you guys Thursday night. And that was almost a week ahead of time. And that's a lot compared to what I normally am. So, um, all right, so let's talk about what we've got going on with this class. So I have Gail's paper here, you guys. So this is a product-based class where you get the paper from me, the designer series paper, and you're gonna use your designer series paper 
for your kits to make them up. And your kits are a little bit different than normal with me. I was like, did I forget to give you guys envelopes? I'm like, nope, I didn't. I gave you a whole pack of envelopes. So I'm like, woof, got to make sure I don't forget anything. So I'm going to show you what you, what Gail, so Gail's doing this class tomorrow. And so I'm going to be using her paper as a, um, cutting it with you guys. And, um, just know that we're going to do this together as a group and get our kits ready. And then we'll go ahead and put the, um, cards together. So let me flip down. So if you got the entire, um, the whole package from me, you will have the rolls of ribbon, which are the Sahara sand and, um, the um, old olive. You'll have your iridescent pearls, um, a pack of envelopes. Your cards are all in here. Yes, Diane Bogenhagen was here last week and we squeezed the, she held the sides while I snuck the plastic around. So these are your card kits. And then you got a half a pack of designer series paper, which includes six of the sheets. And the only sheet that you're really gonna use up is gonna be your sheet that has the flowers. And just so you know, one of the homework assignments I gave you guys was to cut your flowers. So we've got Gail's flowers already cut here as well, which is awesome. Well, there's actually more, um, not sure. <laughs> Let me see here if this one might be the right one. There was uh, three different envelopes I had Barb Collins help me with. So this must be hers. Um, so the other thing that you got too, if you got the, with the DSP is I included the stamp set, which again, I didn't really use it on any of the cards, but you could use it on the inside. So if you didn't um, supply the own pa your own paper, what happens is you'll get this, the embellishments, the ribbon, and your paper, and then the PDF tutorial is included in both cases. So uh, that's what you've got going on. And what you're gonna need to do is we're gonna set these things off to the side because those are gales. And let's see here. I need to get organized. So this is Gail, so I don't wanna take that from her, but um, those are her flowers, that's her stamp set, but I'm gonna cut her paper for her. So what I've got in my head is I'm gonna cut her paper, but this distracted me for a second. I wanted to show you guys, I got some happy mail today. So this came in from Kathy King from Bend, Oregon. She knows I love my purple. And it says, it's not a trick, it's just a treat. And she sent me a beautiful happy Halloween card, some shimmery pink. And I recognize this layout, you guys. That is that mystery card layout we did not too long ago with the diagonal split. And she even had some washi tape on the outside, like do not open type thing. Um, Christina Bernard's is, I don't know if you're watching, Christina. Um, all right, Donna, I hope your appointment with my pre-transplant team this afternoon. I hope it goes really well, Donna. Uh, this is from Christina Bernard. I love these pumpkins. They were from a set last year. And Christina loves to decorate the envelope. And she's got that matching, very pretty. And she's got a little something stamped here. I'll show you guys the inside. She's got the inside stamped, nice too. So Christina, I got this, so thank you very much. All right, so that's the Happy Mail I got, you guys. I gotta put that over to the side now. Okay, so let's think about how we wanna do this. Okay, I gotta go get the PDF tutorial. I did print it, so we're gonna do very similar to what we did yesterday. We're gonna get our some paper prepped, we're gonna insert it into our cards, and then that's how we're gonna work our way down. So I'm thinking here because I have my packet here and I have my pieces cut and I'm cutting gales. So <laughs> let me get the PDF tutorial. That'll make me feel better, I think, because I need to have that in front of me. Okay. Okay, so this is Gail's and this is mine. Okay, so here's the PDF tutorial. Huh, or else stamp a stack. I, huh? I forgot to change this to just say no stamp a stack. <laughs> well, it is a stack of cards, so I won't deny that. It is a stamp a stack in, a, in the case that it is a stack of cards. So, hi, Louie Ann Johnson from Warm and Sunny, Iowa. All right, so you guys, here's your tutorial, and there are 12 cards in here. And 
there's big size pictures, the measurements are in here, and then the instructions. And I think what we're gonna do is go through and cut our designer series paper. And I have the cards here in the order that they're in the PDF, and that's the way I thought we would make them as well. And so you are gonna need to get your trimmers out. And as a group, we're gonna go through and cut these so that you know how to cut. Generally, you guys, like the only time I really do cutting with you is like a stamp -a stack or ink, paper, scissors. Um, now this one as well. So I'm trying to look here. So um, I want to be smart about how I'm going to cut this. And I might look for similar patterns and um, do them first. So let's see here. We've got these two right here. Both feature that pink paper. And they both look like they're the same size, meaning five, this one's five. Um, and then this one's also five high because they have that rich razzleberry mat. So I'm thinking what we're gonna do is grab that sheet out. So grab that pinkish, rosy looking sheet. And because both of those are at five inches tall, then one is gonna be three and three quarter. And then this one is actually three inches. So what we're gonna do is cut at five first. So because my paper faces this way, I want my height to be at five. So we're gonna cut five first. So five inches, and I am gonna cut it all the way across. And at five, now this is extra for the moment. And this, this one is at three inches. So we'll cut at three. So five by three inches is the piece for this one. And then the next one is by three and three quarters. So not quite four. So we're gonna cut it at three and three quarters. And so that'll be our mat. So I'm just gonna actually set these like this. So this is, we do need to get a little rose here and there's also one more piece there. But for now, I'm just gonna set these with each of the cards like that. All right, then this might be extra for the moment we're going to look at where we have some purple. So this bigger purple sheet here is on that card and that, oh, and then this one. Okay, so this top one here is gonna be a four by five and a quarter. So let's do that one. So grab that purple piece and we're gonna cut it at five and a quarter. Well, something like that, let's think about this. This other one here is like about the same height, you know, I mean, like with your four inches. So if I wanted to, instead of cutting a whole chunk that way, what I'm gonna do is actually cut it at four inches. So my pattern is going this way. So I'm gonna cut off the four first, leaving this extra for the moment. And now I'm gonna do four by five and a quarter. So here's my four by five and a quarter for this piece, okay? But then that bottom piece, that bottom card, this one is going to be um, three and three quarters by, I'm guessing three. Let's look up really quick what the PDF says here. So what I'm trying to do is cut like colors at the same time to be smart about how I'm cutting them. So three and three quarters by three, right? So we have almost the three and three quarters, right? But it's by three. So I'm gonna cut it at three and then turn it around and go back to three and three quarters. And now I've got the piece for the bottom of this card right here. So we're just gonna let that hang out. That was the very last card. We're gonna let that sit tight for a moment. Extra piece right here. So let's go through these. We now have this strip. We need to do that, but that is also on a couple other cards. So that, there's um, this one right here, over here, this guy. So that is gonna be a five and a quarter by four. And then we have another five and a quarter by four. And I think that's it for that pattern. So, and it's a different pattern, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> you guys are like, that's not the same pattern. Okay, so that's that pattern. And that pattern is also right here and it's a five by three and three quarters and this is a five by three quarters so knowing that we're going to grab that sheet next so that one is actually the back side of this one so it's here 
And what we're gonna do now is flip this over and it's already cut, what is it? It's cut at five and it's cut at, oh, it's cut at five and a quarter. So with this, what's left, making sure that you keep your five and a quarter intact, right? So this is five and a quarter, so that's good, but we want a four. So let's cut, and actually, did I say, you guys, um, it's actually a five by three and three quarter. So guess what? This side is, one of these sides is definitely five. I know that. Okay, this is the side that's five. We're gonna cut it by three and three quarters. Okay, so just knowing we only gotta make one cut on here to give us that piece, which is the piece for this card right here. It's five by three and three quarters, so that guy's good. And look, look, look what we have left. We have a piece that will work perfectly for this right here. All right, Donna, we'll catch you later. Um, all right, Lynn, see you later. So this is what's left, and guess what? That is a three-quarter inch strip. So we really didn't have to cut more into this. So what we have to do is just take this and cut at three-quarter. Now you have this left. Um, you could use either side, actually. Look at this. They're about the same width here. And if you like the way that those axes ended up looking, that could go right here, and that would work perfectly fine too. So you could use the skinnier one. All right, so that's what I'm gonna actually do. All right, so this is extra and this is extra. So we're making some progress here. We've got this card done except for the little flower, which we'll get to in a moment. We've done this one and we started to do this one. So we're gonna set these off to the side here. So that one's done, this one's done. And what we have left on this one is this little green pattern, all right? So let's see what piece that is. If I'm not mistaken, it's the back side of this. Okay, so it's the back side of your purple. So this can't be used. It's not gonna work to have the skinny, but what you can do is take, and then let's see if this green is used anywhere else. So not here, not there. Not there. Oh, there it is. Look at this. Here is the green piece. So this is gonna be good. So this is a five and a quarter by four, and this is a five and a quarter by something short. And so we're gonna cut both of those at the same time. And so now what we're gonna do is take this piece and put it this way. And we we'll might as well cut at five and a quarter high, right? So, our, so this is extra. And this is gonna be by four. And you know what? Well, let's flip it over so we're looking at the green. And then the other one for this card, this little DSP is one and a quarter. So I'm gonna set this here at one and a quarter. This is extra. And now we've got these two pieces right here, which make the front of this card. So that one's good. This is extra. All right, we're gonna save this and put it in with this card back here. Okay, let's look at, I really was anxious to do this pattern right here. So that pattern is on a five and a quarter by four here and a five and a quarter by four there, plus this little strip right here. So let's get that one. It's on the back side of these little baby flowers. So five and a quarter by four, and we're gonna do that twice. So five, and a quarter extra for the moment and we're gonna do by four by four and by this little sliver here is actually a one by five so what I'm gonna do instead of cutting off the whole length here I'm just gonna cut off my one inch, right? So I've at, I'm at four, so I'm gonna cut it at three, right? Four minus one is three, so this is extra. And now I'm gonna go ahead and cut it at five, so I wasn't cutting off the whole bottom on that other piece. So this little guy now goes on the pile with this card, and we've got these ready to go on the next card. So we need to get the green going. So let's look at the green, and I believe the green is a three by five. So 
The green is this, and we haven't cut yet. And this also has a pattern to it, going this way. I don't remember if we used that green anywhere else. And I'm thinking, yes, we did. We used that green right here, okay? So we're gonna cut it. So that one is five and a quarter, and this one's five. So we don't wanna cut the whole length at five. Otherwise, we're gonna be kicking ourselves because we'll have cut off a whole sheet there. So what I think I'm gonna do, let's think about this. I think I'm gonna cut down at three inches this way. So if I cut at three inches this way, so I've got my, hi Susan Bellamy. So I've got my three inches this way. Now I can cut this one at five because that is what I need for here. So three by five and that, okay. And then we're gonna save this because we need that on the next card. Uh, let's do it right now. So it's this guy right here. And this is actually a two by five and a quarter, right? So let's put that back here. So we got that one done. We're gonna skip. So this one right here is a two by five and a quarter. So because I need five and a quarter in height. I'm gonna cut that first. That leaves me this chunk down here. And then I need two inches. So this and this will be extra. And then this will go with this card right here. So I'll slip that in there now. All right, now back to this guy. That's the white flowers. And the white flowers are used on this card too. That's five and a quarter by four. And then this one is five by three and three quarters. So we're gonna take that piece and we're gonna cut it. I think I'm gonna just cut it off at five and a quarter. So we're gonna go five, well, uh, either way, it's a horse a piece, right? Do you cut it off this way or do you cut a four inch strip and then have, you know, let's do that. Let's cut it at four this way. We cut it at four. Um, Jean, the kit included 12 by 12 paper, just as you see it. I mailed big packages to people. I did not cut this down. This class would not have worked to do this as a six by six because of these big flowers. Had the paper gotten cut in quarters, um, it would not have worked because these big flowers would have gotten cut in half and then they wouldn't have been able to be used like this. So everybody got full sheets from me for this class. So very cool. Uh, four by five and a quarter is the one. And then the other one is five by three and three quarters. So that's extra. And then we need to flip this and get this at three and three quarters. And so that will go with this one right here. Oh, and I forgot to turn down my ringer. Hang on, guys. I'm going to go out of my phone and turn that off and find you guys back in here. Okay, so that's this one right here. Okay, and then this one, we've already got this guy good to go now. And how did I not get back right in there? Okay, so this one goes with this. And then now we're on this one. Oh, we have a little bit of green left on this one. So this one right here goes with that, but this one will go with that one. We need some, I think it's a five by, let's see here. This one is a five by one and a half. So we gotta find that green paper again. So go back to your sheets here. We need that other green pattern. Which, oh, look at this, we have a piece left. That's gonna be perfect. So we need this to be five by one and a half. So I'm gonna cut it at one and a half first. Um, Jean, the same thing with the stamp -a stacks I never cut the paper down for a stamp -a stack Everybody gets a full pack of paper for the, um, the Christmas stamp -a stack that I did. So this one goes on here like that. Okay, so that's that guy. This one had this piece that went with it. So that's good. Now this one has some yellow with it. So let's get our yellow and knowing that this last card has a little bit of yellow too. So the stripes are going the opposite way. Oh, but look at this. 
I bet that that is about the same width. So, so let's look at this. So this card right here, the DSP is two by three and a half. And this last one, it's probably three and three quarters by two. So let's figure out what's gonna be best for cutting. So you should have one sheet left that it hasn't, oh yeah, the green one's actually been cut. So it's the back side is the yellow. So let's see here. Oh man, <laughs> is that the right size? Oh, it's a little too small. Well, if you don't feel like cutting another piece, you could potentially use that piece back there. I'm gonna cut the right size though. So <laughs> it was close though. All right, so my stripes are going horizontal. And this is three and a half tall by two wide. So, and this one is two, I believe. So let's cut this at two inches this way. So let's get this here. And we're gonna cut this at two. I'm hoping this is right. I didn't really think it through, but two. Oh yeah, this is two by, now we need three and a half. So three and a half. That gives us the piece for right here. So now we've got this one done like that. And then this one just needed this back. So that's ready to go. And this one, we'll do this last one here. That is by three and three quarters. So we had our two inches perfect. Now we just need to cut the three and three quarters here. And that'll be at the top. So that one's ready to go. Extra little bit for you guys. And then the last card uses two colors of designer paper again. There is the purples and then there's the, huh, <laughs> I think I didn't think about this. So when we, so we might have to improvise here slightly, slightly, because it just dawned on me. <laughs> you don't have any of this purple left and um, yep, I meant, okay, I had a thought in my head and I think that thought escaped me, but you guys have your flowers already cut and that is the purple that's supposed to go on this card right here. So we're going to improvise because there is another sheet of purple that will absolutely work and it'll look good as well. And so we're going to go with this purple on here for this. And then we got to find the little white flower sheet, which is this one. Okay. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. We have a little piece here. If you're cutting your paper the same way as I am, you'll have this little piece and it's almost the right size. We just have to trim it ever so slightly. And this one is three and seven eighths. So let's do three and seven eighths. Ah, Suzanne says slow down. Suzanne, I have three hours to get this class done. <laughs> I'm allotting myself three hours, but I really technically will have people showing up at my door in two hours and 15 minutes because I have class at four o'clock, so I can't slow down. <laughs> the good thing about this is as soon as we're done, um, you guys can catch the replay. And I've often heard that um, that's why people love watching. Um, nobody really... I've heard this from people. Generally, they just watch and then they put together the cards later. So just know that you don't have to keep up with me. That is not the goal. Don't try to keep up with me. Um, you're going to get frustrated and not happy, happy. So just know that you're, you're newer to taking classes with me. So know that the, the goal is not for you to keep up with me. Um, I know that I've got 12 cards to make with you guys and I have two hours to do it. So um, this one is, so this DSP is five and an eighth by two. So we're going to do two high and then five and an eighth. So, all right. That's why I also sent this PDF out to you guys last week, Thursday, so that you had a whole week. If you wanted to pre-cut your pieces, you could do that. So this card is going to be impromptu, slightly different. It's going to have the purple on here versus that purple, only because um, that purple all got consumed in the other. So... Um, I just thought I turned my phone off, you guys. I guess I didn't. Um, so we're going to try that one more time, turning the volume down. I could have sworn I had oh, one little bit. Okay, we're back on track. That just bought you some time, Suzanne. <laughs> so, all right. The back is what we cut our flowers out of. Yep, Judy Emil, we said that. You got it. So, um, yeah, when Chris and I were designing these cards, 
we didn't think that this purple, the whole thing would get consumed. We were actually only, this class was only supposed to be eight cards, you guys. So when we designed this card, we thought you would have um, a quarter chunk left. But when I got home, I felt really bad for those other flowers. There's basically th four more flowers. Um, there's four more flowers and I couldn't have them sitting there all alone, not being used, you guys. So that is why you ended up with a different pattern here. Um, I thought you guys would appreciate having four more cards than having to use that pattern paper. So all's good. You guys, we improvise, right? Um, you have enough paper to, to do all of the cards. And so um, it just, it's gonna look slightly different. So, but, so yeah, so that's exactly what happened. I know we didn't intend to use um, all f a, um, 12 of the flowers. So, or I should say the 11 flowers. So we've gotten through cutting our designer series paper. And so we can move our trimmers out of the way. And yeah, exactly, Doris. The replay, and Judy said the same thing. You can pause me, shut me up, start me, do whatever you want with me. <laughs> so that, yeah. And if I went super, super, super slow, you guys would be aboard with me, I think. And I, <laughs> I'd be hungry and having to go to the bathroom a lot by the time we're done. So what I did is, so I'm gonna be using this tutorial. You guys can work using, the, you also have this tutorial, right? That shows you the measurements and how to cut the paper and what it looks like. The ink colors that I brought in for this one are Highland Heather, Old Olive, Rich Razzleberry, primarily for the sentiments. The die cutting came from, that little die comes from that. And then this is what we're gonna use. Um, I think, look at all my little guys are all bombarded together here. So I'm gonna do, I like love and big hugs. I like um, a card to say hello. These are perfect, you guys. These little baby sentiments. Um, I felt bad for the flowers. Yes, Catherine. They're going to be sitting there all alone, not being used for a long, long time. So I thought if I gave you guys four more cards to make, that those random four flowers would be, um, would be, um, sorry, somebody's calling me again. Uh, birthday wishes is what we'll do for the third one. So you guys, this is perfect. The sizing on this is awesome because you can fit them on the front of a card really nicely. So, all right. And I have a couple blocks here. And the other thing I'm gonna do, just like I did yesterday, you guys, I'm not going to Stella anything right now, and I'm not going to put embellishments on. You guys know how to do that. My goal is to get through making all 12 of these cards with you in the next two hours, right? Because Judy Emil is gonna be showing up here at 345, aren't you, Judy? <laughs> as well as I have three other people for class tonight. So my goal is to get through all, making all 12 of the cards. I'm not gonna concentrate on stamping any of the insides. I'm not gonna do them in any embellishment and selling. You guys can handle that on your own, I think. Um, so just know that I'm intentionally not doing that. So you don't have to remind me because I know that you guys are so good about reminding me to not forget to Stella. So, okay, so we're gonna get this party started, you guys. We're gonna work through the tutorial here. And we're gonna work through, now here's the thing. I just realized that these are all Gail's pieces. <laughs> oh, Gail, yes. So those are Gail's pieces. My pieces are over here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, I'm gonna set these off to the side one by one so that they're over here in order for Gail. And I'm going to grab my pieces, I had mine here. I don't know if I kept them in any particular order, but we're gonna see about mine here. And I know it's this little guy and that one. Okay, I even cut my little baby flower out. So that, and then you guys, the this whole packet for you is in order from the PDF tutorial. So if you open this packet up, just for those that took the class with me, if you open this up and you push everything all around and get it all over, it's gonna be so disorganized, you're gonna be so sad and upset with me that everything is not easy and efficient, right? So I tried to make this, hi Cindy Runtree, I tried to make this as easy and efficient for you as possible. So if this were me, I would slide the little plastic liner off here and every card base starts a new card. So. If you wanna work with this, I would go in order and the PDF matches the order that I put this in. So this is the top, this purple one is the bottom. So 
Smooth and efficient is what we're gonna do here. So what you're gonna do is grab off this top card base, set the other stuff off to the side, set the plastic somewhere else. Don't worry about all your DSP pieces. Um, you know, take this first one and put it with it. That's what we wanna work on. Um, I'm gonna make sure I keep Gail's off to the side so I don't mess with hers. And on this one, you guys, there's different ink colors. I use the Rich Razzleberry on some cards. I use Highland Heather on some, um, the Old Olive. So what I'm gonna do is, I, to keep things nice and simple for me, I'm gonna do the same color on, so I have um, a Love and Big Hugs. I'm gonna do that same color is always gonna be Rich Razzleberry. Except for, I just realized that this one, you have a little bit more wiggle room here. So this one is a little bit longer. So I'm gonna actually use um, a card to say hello because I just changed my mind, you guys. We can do that, right? All right, the only other thing that you need to remember is that little baby flower. So let's talk about that really quick. This card is the only one that uses a little baby flower. So. Let's talk about that really quick. There's a sheet. It's the back side of this pattern right here. Honestly, it does not matter which one you pick. And the reason I wanted to wait till I cut my paper because I didn't want to just cut this little guy randomly out of a piece. Flip this one over and look at this. By golly, there is a rosy guy right there. You could fussy cut that rose right out of there. Don't know where it was on that whole piece of paper, right? The whole 12 by 12. But you could pull that one, you could pull that one, you could even use this yellow one, and you could use the purple one. I would use definitely use something from this piece right here so that, um, so that you got it. All right, so that flower needs to get cut out and keep it handy. And in your kit, you guys, you're going to have these three bannery strips. They're longer than what they need to be. I'm going to just say that right off the bat. You are going to have to trim them shorter, okay? So for right now... What you really want to concentrate on is the, like, you're going to make sure they line up. And then this side is what's going to get cut off, right? So it's longer than what it needs to be by a little bit. So don't worry, we're going to trim it. So, okay. So you have here, this is your Rich Razzleberry mat for this guy. You have a white inside and a Rich Razzleberry mat. And then you have your card base. And hi, Marsha Long from Texas. Your card base is cut off. A little bit is cut off of it. So you're gonna need to take your bone folder and burnish it. And again, I mentioned I'm not gonna worry about stamping anything on my inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue. But if you're one that really likes to stamp your insides uh, before you get glue happy, then go for it. But what for now, like you could stamp a flower. You don't wanna stamp it on the right-hand side, right? Because that gets covered up. You want to stamp your sentiment and your your bottom here so that it's um, on the left-hand side. So we're going to flip this over. We're going to flip this over. And we're going to get, get our first card in the books here, you guys. So that gets there. And I'm going to look at my pattern, and I think I'm going to flip it this way so that the little dot things are more to the right. And they're not dots, whatever they are. So this gets glued on the side. Again, make sure you stamp before you do this, you guys. Um, you'll want to stamp because if you don't like the way you stamp it, you can always flip it over. All right, so then this rose pattern goes on here. And now we can flip these two over. Hi, Sherry Everett, you made it, yay. We just started on our first card. What we did is we worked through as a group, we um, cut all the paper. You guys pay attention to your roses that they're going the right way. And then this one goes on here. All right, so. Before I glue this in, I'm actually gonna work on this because I, I wanna use this as a guide to know how much to cut off. So I'm going to grab my piercing mat. Oh, there's a purple pen down there, very nice. Okay, so we're gonna use the Razzleberry ink. And 
Remember your flower needs to go over on this side a little bit. So you don't wanna stamp all the way to the right or all the way to the left. What I would do is set my flower here and then stamp my sentiment. Don't worry about the extra space here on the right. So we're gonna take care of that in a moment. So what we can do is glue this down. I'm not gluing all the way to the right either. So this is gonna get set right in here. I'm looking for the same margin on the left as I am on the top and the bottom. And then this flips over. And we're gonna glue that onto that. So now this one, this is like a half inch, three quarters, and an inch for the size of the strips. And it's using that banners pick a punch. All right, so there's that, it's all glued. Now, what I wanted to do was set this here. I'm not gonna actually glue it. I wanna see how much needs to get cut off, right? I'm just using it as a guide. So I see, if I'm gonna look at this peak right here, I can see just a little bit. And so I'm gonna actually pick this up now and hold this. Now I know where I need to cut. So I'm gonna just flip this over and now I'm gonna use, if you like to use a paper trimmer, go for it, but I'm just gonna free style cut this. Okay, because on my card here, it has it flush with the Razzleberry. If you would have glued that in, it would have been hard to cut that, right? So I've got that cut now. Now I can go ahead and glue my inside in. Goes right here. All right, so that's looking good. Now this little arm, before I glue it down, we gotta make sure we get this ribbon in here. And I think what I'll do is pop the flower up first so I can see where that's gonna sit. Something about right here. And then we gotta do the ribbon. So each one of these cards uses the ribbon, like each ribbon, except for one card. I think on one card only did we use, we used two ribbons, but it was the same ribbon. So what we're gonna do is use the green first and have that prepped, grab your tear and tape. Like this is gonna go down first. And we're weaving the green back and forth. So I'm gonna start it down here, maybe something like that. Bring it up, make your little bunny ear. Bring it down, make your little bunny ear. And then I'm gonna bring it back up this side. Thanks, Judy. <laughs> and then let's just set this on here. Now, you, if you don't like your loops, how you made them, you can always redo them. Just make them a little smaller. Like you have the room to like pull this down a little bit and make your little loopies just a little bit shorter. Um, okay, just like that. But now I mentioned that we have that ribbon on there twice, this tan ribbon. So we're gonna do, this is gonna be coming up that side, right through the middle, more or less. And then we're gonna have that come down there and we'll tear and tape on the back. We'll trim our tails in a second, so don't worry about them. And what I'm gonna do is pop this up though with dimensionals. Put one right on the end. Now what I'm gonna do, instead of putting it on the end here, I'm gonna put it onto my card base right here so I don't have to guess that I go over the edge with that. And then now I'm going to line that up on that right hand side. So I'm flush and there we go. Now you can take a little time and trim your tails. I'm gonna leave that bottom one. That actually looked really good. This one we're gonna go that way. And then this guy, 
I might just trim him a little bit. Okay, so what you guys can do on this card next then would be to Stella it and then stamp. You know, you should have your inside done and then embellish it. So, yay, we got one done. <laughs> on to the next we go. Okay, I'm gonna set him off to the side. We'll set you off to the side. I need more space. All right, I heard Kelly say that in the live last week too. All right, hi, Betty Pile. So here's our next card, card number two. So you guys, these are actually in order. <laughs> this is number two. All right, so next thing you're gonna wanna do from your pile of cards here, just grab off the next one. So you should have this section right here. And then you're gonna also grab this piece here, which this is Gail. So I'm gonna set that over here. And I'm gonna pick out from my pile that I have right here. Must be that guy. And in this case, you guys will have this little strip for your sentiment. You have this piece for embossing. So, um, I forgot about this. Ooh, I don't even know if I wrote this um, on the... Huh? Oh, I did it. Sponge white ink over the embossed area. Boom, I did write it. Very, very good. Okay, so let's fold this first and burnish your edge. I am going to, um, so on this one, you guys, when I do white insides, I don't always mat it. The one, that, the reason the last card was is because of that edge being cut off. So you're gonna wanna stamp on the card base itself, and if you don't like it, you're gonna turn it inside out and then re-stamp it and put that stamped image on the top and you'll be able to cover it up. Okay, so we can get glue happy here on these pieces. So that one can go down first. So we've got rich razzleberry for the colors on this one. Um, the flower that we're gonna need is that white flower right here. So you guys make sure you grab that out too. And this can get adhered down onto the base. It's all about the base. All right. So the one thing that makes this look super cool is the white that is sponged onto that razzleberry piece. So that's just a rectangle and it's embossed with the painted texture embossing folder. And we need to get a dauber and some white ink. So one moment, please. A dauber and some white ink. Inky dinky doo. Okay, so with your white ink, um, if you like to keep your white ink clean, don't dip right into the pad. If you do, this is what happens. <laughs> uh, it gets love. And um, you could always use like your re-inker in a block, but you just dip in here and you're gonna lightly hover over the raised images. And what happens is they look so much more pronounced than everything else. It just gives a little bit of character and definition. And you don't have to worry so much about the middle area because that's going to get covered up with the flower, but that's what I'm doing. Just adding a little bit of accenting to this one. So that's for the white ink. And then what will happen is this gets popped up with dimensionals. Did you guys see me looking for them? All right, and the flower will also get popped up. So we're going to get that ready to go. Get this ready to go. Put these on, and then what we'll do is we will stamp our sentiment. Okay, so this just goes right in the middle. And I am 100% charged, you guys. So we're going to unplug that. Less cords to look at. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay. So, let's see here. This guy, no reason why you can't get this one down as well. So, on this one, I think I did cut the stem off of this. So, don't worry. You don't want to, I mean, if you want to see it coming through, you can. But I like my things to look like they're coming out <laughs> and not extending past. So, um, 
I had two more to finish up today. It takes time to get the ribbon just right. Embellish it so I love them. Good, Sharon. I'm so happy you like this class. The cards are so pretty. I definitely agree, you guys. Like, it's if you take the time and get that ribbon just perfect on these cards and get them embellished just right, you're going to be so happy with it. So this is pretty much ready to go, except for we need a little sentiment. And as long as we're here, I'm going to look and see what that one is. Okay, so we are going to grab our piercing mat back, and we're going to do the Rich Razzleberry again. And I've already got this one dirty with the Rich Razzleberry. So we're going to do a card to say hello. A lot of these are very interchangeable. So there's a card to say hello. And then the ribbon on this one, you'll need your tearing tape. Got that guy waiting in the wings, and we got two of them actually waiting in the wings. So this is on the half, you know, the second half of the little label. So put a little tearing tape on there. And we're gonna start with the green. So you're gonna weave it back and forth again. So I'm gonna put a little tail coming up that way. And a little baby loop and as I'm looping it I'm moving back towards the center and like that and then I'm gonna put that piece of tear and tape over the top and we're going to grab the tan one here Sahara sand I'm gonna work with that ROM that cut edge so I don't have to cut it again just gonna get that like that and just cut exactly the amount you need and put your tearing tape over the top again and <laughs> dimensionals so this is where you want the baby dimensionals um, I'm gonna go for the black ones anyways because they're right here and hopefully no one will see them behind there <laughs> so I'm going to put the little guys here and pick them off. And then that will go put it right down here. So, you can finagle stuff if you need to a little bit. All right, Stella your flowers, put your embellishments on, make sure you got your inside done. All right, so that's card number two. Woo -hoo. All right, so this is going over here. <laughs> I'm like, I got too many piles going on. That's the first card. There's that one. And then, okay, then this can go over here. <laughs> All right. And then we'll flip the page here and look at the next one. All right, so this is our purplicious one. PDF here. So these are Gail's pieces. So let me find mine. So this is where I have to show you guys a little trick. <laughs> so I was cutting Gail's paper and in the PDF tutorial, I had you guys cut a four by five and a quarter and this will get glued onto it, right? So it's perfect, right? That's exactly what we're gonna need to do. Now, for me, <laughs> I personally ran out of this designer series paper, this purple pattern. I like personally didn't have more sheets left. So I'm frugal with my designer series paper, right? So it's like I have mine cut and I cut mine for me personally for this class to, to look like this, right? I, I'm going to piece them together, but how are you going to tie ribbon behind? So something to think about if you guys are running out of designer paper and you, you have enough to make it look right, but you don't have enough to um, put it on the card easy, what I would suggest doing is grab yourself a piece of white <laughs> and you're sacrificing piece of white to have your designer paper but what you can do is glue these on to the white and then now you have something to secure your ribbon onto in the back now you don't have to do that personally because I showed you guys how to cut the paper and you cut it so that your green glues on here boom okay but for me this is why I'm doing it this way. <laughs> so I definitely didn't have enough um, DSP to make the world go round there. So I'm going to cover that side up. 
cover that side up. So once I get these on here, you're going to see it looking the same. And then we're still going to be able to do our ribbon. All right, so let's slip him up there. And yeah, I used a piece of white behind there, but I also didn't have enough designer paper. And this way it looked exactly the same. So then this little green guy goes there. All right, now it looks just like yours, right? You would never know the different. Um, if you do do that, um, just make sure that your papers are cut the same. They look pretty similar to me. And now what we can do is find where your tear and tape is. Keep those right there. Wherever your seam is, that's where you're gonna want your tear and tape. And you're gonna put the green one down. Scotch tape the green and purple together on the back. Yes, you could definitely do that, Cindy. Yeah, you could definitely do that. Um, this though, I liked having a little bit more structure to this card. Um, so that white actually does help provide a little support. <laughs> it's like a bra, I guess. It helps hold it together. So, all right, then put your these guys on the back side here. Yeah, and then it's a little less flimsy. So, um, oh, speaking of which, all right, pick up your cards. And what you need is this next card base. Pick everything up from there. Set the other stuff back. You don't need it at the moment. And you're going to have here a deckled rectangle that is die cut. Now, on the PDF I wrote that you need a piece of purple Highland Heather. It's not the right size. It's actually big enough for you to die cut it out. So if you're buying the PDF tutorial from me and watching this, just know you need to die cut all of this stuff. So um, if you didn't get the class from me, like with all your cut pieces, it's going to be hard for you. So this is a deckled rectangle that's already die cut for those attending the class. And then there's a piece of white that matches on the inside here. That's just a, like a little bit smaller and you have your little baby tag. And same concept as the last one. You need to stamp your inside first. And if you don't like it, you can always flip it inside out. All right. And then put that bad stamped image on the top, which ultimately will get covered up. Okay, so then that's gonna go right onto here. And, okay, so a little bit stuff going on. Oh, my little pearl Z is moving. Okay, there is speckling on the backside here. So you guys can maybe see a little bit of it, okay? We're gonna grab out and do that because that needs to get done now. Well, we have the ink open and we're gonna grab out a Stella pen. Now this one uses Highland Heather, and on this one, we're going to do Love and Big Hugs. So make sure that's straight on there. Okay, and then you're gonna stamp that right in the middle. Okay, so we're gonna leave Love and Big Hugs for when we do purple cards, and set that there. All right. Perfect, so that's good. Oh, of course you guys, you want to just add, we gotta leave the ink open. So we are going to use our Stella pen and we're gonna splatter. So, all right, perfect. But yes, you're right, Cindy. I definitely could have used Scotch tape if I wanted to um, not use the paper, but I have enough white paper that I thought, yeah, might as well use it. <laughs> so, all right, splattering, you guys. We're gonna get a block and what we're gonna do is dip our block into the ink and we're gonna grab a Stella pen. Now my Stella pens aren't generally the juiciest of Stella pens. So what I'll find myself doing, I'm doing this, went in my water bottle, I really did, and I'm trying to get a drip of water. That's it, I got one little drop of water, okay? So that will help me. So I put one little droplet of water on there from my tap water and if your Stella pen is super, super juicy, you probably don't need to do that, but it helps to make it last a little bit or go a little bit further. So what I'm gonna do is actually, we're gonna put this up here. I'm just gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? We're gonna put a piece of paper. It goes everywhere, you guys, I promise it does. So I'm gonna just cover that stuff up. So I'm dipping into my Stella pen, into the um, block with the ink, and you're just going to Shake, 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 Sonora, shake your body liner and get purpley splotches on there. 
it just adds texture to the back. It's so good. It just does a little bit. And when you're done, you can wipe your Stella out and then you have no more color. I'm gonna save this in case we use that on a different card. So we'll set you right there, set you there, and you there. We're done with this. I know we Stella on a different one too, so I don't remember what color it was. That takes just a second for it to dry. And you can see it got everywhere over there. So I'm glad I had my protective barrier there. All right, so let's get this glued on. And the flower that we need for this one is, huh, hope it's in here. Otherwise I'm gonna steal it from Gail's pile. Huh, let's pull these all out. Oh, maybe there it is on the bottom. That guy right there. Okay, cool. I had it. So we're going to put a little bit of, yeah, it is. So if you guys are ever uncertain of what to do, because something looks blank or it looks too white, don't hesitate to splatter it because it, it'll help. It really does. It just makes it, takes it over the edge, right? Okay. So now this gets glue dots, pop dots, I should say right here. And our flower is going to get popped up. Let's get that going. You guys, don't hesitate to use those sides. They need love too. <laughs> All right. So we're going to put this right onto our card front. Like that. And I know it covers up so much of the DSP, it makes me sad, but we still get the outer area. And then we got the flower action here. I'm gonna put one skinny one right there. And now this one, I think we're gonna not worry about cutting off. Oh, you know what? Let's just take and cut that little bit off right there. You guys, I just threw my scissors on the floor. Did you hear that? All right, so we're gonna put a little bit of liquid glue at the bottom, and then this one goes right like that, maybe. Okay. All right, so, okay. This Love and Big Hugs just gets put down onto the card, and then for this one, we're making a bow. So, if you don't wanna make a bow, you don't have to. You could do the weaving the ribbon back and forth, just like we did on some of the other ones. But I thought this one looked great with a little bow on it. So let's grab our bow maker and you're gonna use the tan ribbon. Hold me on, getting to the end here. Okay, so <laughs> let's see what cards I have left. Need a little there. <laughs> I, you guys, I don't know if I have more of this ribbon. So. <laughs> this might be all I have. So let's pretend I made a bow. I, I, and if I do have more of this ribbon, it's upstairs. So this bow can be added at any point, you guys. So what I would do is make a bow with the bow maker, and then I'd stick the bow right on here. But because that's something that can always be done after the fact, we're gonna now I'm gonna salvage this from what I have left and use it for the other cards that need stuff below. So, <laughs> hope that makes sense. All right, so there's our number three. And the next one then is gonna be this guy. Ooh, yeah, okay, so cool. So again, these are Gail's pieces right here. So I'm gonna go through my little pile over here and find where I have them right here. So grab those and Pick up your cards here and grab the next base. And you should have a, this is from the scalloped contour dies. You should have a little bit of, a little baby label and you have two white pieces. So this is very similar to the very first card we did. It's the, basically the same kind of layout. So burnish your edge with that. Um, if I were you guys, stamp your inside and then go ahead and glue your strip down. Just remember when you are gluing, here's my tip, you guys. When you're when you're going to stamp your inside, just make sure that you're accounting for the designer paper being on the side. 
and stamp your sentiment over here versus in the middle, right? Because if you put it in the middle and then you put this on, it's going to get covered up. So let's get these guys glued onto here. So this goes on that smaller white mat. It makes those, what did you see that? That made those white flowers pop out when you put a white behind there. And then this one, <clears throat> so you're gonna see a white border on the top, the bottom, and the right side. And then now these get glued onto your card base. So this one goes, make sure you got them facing the right way. That always helps. So that one will go there. And then this one will go on here. Okay, so, so far so good. Now this one uses that pink flower. So you should have one of those cut out already. And the white here. So I did it on this one as well. This is splattered. It's splattered with the rich raspberry this time. So you have a choice. You've already got the block out here with the purple ink, which you could use, or you could do another block and bring out um, rich raspberry. But you know what? So much of it does get covered up that just having a little bit of purple on there, I think is all that we're gonna need. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just gravi gra 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 gravitate towards using the purple here, just using that again. So just making sure I get some of that water mixed in with that. Okay, so that should be good. I'm happy with that. Again, if you want it to be the rich raspberry, pull out rich raspberry, dip your block in that, and then use that. But you'll see here, what happens is that flower covers up a bunch of this. So let's flip these over, grab our glue, our dimensionals, and put this down, and then this flower needs one there. That little leafy could have one, and there. Okay, hmm, I just realized. So this one, the ribbon is coming out from behind the flower. So if you look at this and see that it's coming out from behind the flower. So technically we could have waited to put our dimensionals on, but we're gonna get this one down onto our card front. That's just centered on your green. All right, then the tear and tape. And we're gonna have to tear and tape it. Oh, Cindy said, use purple splatter. That's exactly what I did. It was easier. So we're gonna put a little tear and tape there. And it's right over here. So prep the back with your tear and tape. And you're gonna start with the green. So we've got a little loop coming out here and then a little tail. So there's that and that. I'm gonna try to cut these the length that they need to be so I don't have to cut them again. But what's gonna happen is that's not gonna stay very well. So this is where you need to have another piece of tear and tape right over the top of it. And we're gonna pick it off and we're gonna put a little shimmy of the tan right behind it. I'm only gonna use a little bit, you guys. That's really, that's really what I got on the back there. So you don't need a lot. And I'm not gonna peel that off, I'm just gonna leave that. So we got the one side. And then I'm gonna prep two pieces of tear and tape here. We're gonna do a little loop. Let's see here. Oh, you know what, that's a perfect slant of a tail. So I'm gonna try to leave that intact as my tail. And then I'm gonna make my little loop like that. Okay. And then just trim it. So you guys are not using any ribbon through that middle section on either color. So that's good. 
And then this guy, just a little bit. You just want to see, oh, hang on. I got to peel that off. A little bit, just showing right out the side there. And a little tear and tape over the top. So you've just added the two colors of ribbon on like diagonals. And I'm gonna leave that tear and tape backing on and just pop these off. And let's see what our tag looks like. Oh, see, I got purple splatter on the tag. Uh -huh, that's all right. So that'll probably look good. And then this is going to be at the top here. I'm going to put a little bit of glue. I like the bottom side to have a little bit of liquid glue so it's flat. And now we need to stamp our rich razzleberry. So the rich razzleberry for me is the a card to say hello. Hello, you called. And put that the right way. Stamp that right in the middle there. And that is going to get popped up with dimensional so this is perfect for so this side here and then cutting that and then go right in the middle and I'll give you a nice long strip here that fits right in the middle and of course over the edge all right so then this so I noticed that I'm gonna trim this little guy just a little bit so that and you put this down. So on this card, I noticed I saw my little um, stitching. So if you want to see the stitching, go right above the stitching. And otherwise, go right over the stitching. Okay. That one took a little bit to get going. So, um, but it's very pretty. I like this, like the designer paper just makes these flowers pop so much. So, all right. So there's that one. Um, how I embellished this one, I put all those iridescent pearls right in the center. I put seven of them right in the center of that flower. And then there's one, two, three more on that one. So, cleans and bagels. All right, next card. Um, I didn't even flip it. <laughs> all right, so we did that one. So now we're on to this one. So, this guy, so this is Gail's piece. So I'm going to grab from my pile, which is right here, and pick up all your cards, you guys. Grab the top base, put the rest back, and you have your piece of vellum. You've got a stitched rectangle. It's got a little bit of stitching on the sides. You have your little label. white and pear pizzazz that are both four by five and a quarter. And then your base is rich razzleberry. Now the flower you need is that yellow one. That guy right there. Okay. So that's gonna go on there. And then let's get the glue happy. So let me think about it. I think I'm just gonna leave my glue inside. So I'm just gonna leave my inside that I'm not gonna glue it. So you guys, on all those last three cards, it was white base. And on this one, it was special because it had the edge cut off. But going forward now, I'm not going to stamp and glue my insides. So in essence, not glue them in. So I'm not gonna stamp them and then not glue them. So just know that you have a white mat that goes on your inside. And then but let's get, I you guys, I couldn't use that pattern. I didn't know how to use it. The flowers were so small and the pattern just didn't, so you will not see this pattern on any of these cards, but we did use these little flowers. So they did get used. So then this goes right onto our card front, just like this. And onto your rich razzleberry. All right, so this one has the Rich Razzleberry again for the ink color. So we're just going to do a card to say hello. Oh, thanks, Feline. 
the, the, yeah. So I don't know if you guys caught it too, but originally we only had eight cards. When I first showed this class way back in the beginning, Chris and I had put together eight. And when I'm like, oh, I need to use those other four flowers. And I thought, how do we get more cohesiveness? It ended up being three purple, three green, three rich razzleberry, and three white, so that the card bases all got used equal amounts too. I like doing stuff like that. All right, so what can we do? So this is gonna get popped up and our flowers are gonna get popped up. So let's do that. And let's cut these apart. All right, so we're gonna take these and put this on the card right away so that it's nicely centered right here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put, so the flower doesn't have anything behind it. The ribbon is behind the little tag again. So I'm gonna pop the flowers up on the vellum. I'm not gluing the vellum yet. But what I'm doing is adding the flowers to the vellum because now I know where I can put adhesive, right? Otherwise, you're kind of guessing where you should put the liquid glue because you can see the liquid glue through the vellum. So by doing this, now you've just um, hidden all the liquid glue. All right, and then I want to put a little baby, he's pop, he, he's floppy over there. So we're gonna make him unfloppy there. And I did notice I trimmed these stems at an angle here. So we're gonna do that one at an angle. And I'm gonna leave it. So on this one, you guys, I know I said on the first one I cut them off, but for some reason on this one, it looked good to me to leave them hanging there. So I am going to leave them hanging below. If you don't like it, you can always trim yours so that they disappear behind your tag. It's just that some of that was coming down below it, so it looked good. All right, so card to say hello. We're gonna need our tear and tape. So we're gonna prep two of them. All right, Feline, we'll catch you later. Yeah, I want to check your tracking on yours, too, because I could have sworn that we mailed it. Well, you know what? We mailed it Friday. So it's very possible that it's going to arrive tomorrow or the next day. So this little tail goes up this way. And then we're going to make a little baby loop. And then a little baby loop again. And then we'll cut this. You guys are going to do this in your sleep, I bet, when you are making your little labels like this. Because I think we did that quite a few times. So on this one then, put that right through the middle. A little more tear and tape. And put this one going that way. And this one going that way. And then trim that little guy. All right, so... We're gonna need dimensionals. Not my ribbon scissors. And we're gonna do this. One more. Okay. Oh, you're, maybe it's still gonna be here. Yeah, that would be awesome, Feline. Um, if you got your email from last week too, you could always check the tracking on it to see once what it shows. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do on this one. Stella your flowers. And then to do the rhinestones, the iridescent pearls, I should say, um, I've got five. It looks like that one doesn't belong there. He moved, <laughs> he's moving on me. He actually goes up here. And this one started moving. So I've got two on the label. And then I added two more here and one more there. So that's where those pearls are. So that one's good. All right, then the next card, we need these pieces. So again, I've got Gail's there, so I'm gonna grab mine. And I did go cut myself 
a bigger mat. And then we need a two inch piece here, that one. All right, so this is gonna be similar kind of a layout to the last one. Now, I had enough paper that I could just cut myself a whole mat versus using a white piece behind. So we're gonna glue this down and put that on the right side. I mean, it could go on the left side too, whatever you guys are feeling. But that gets glued here. If you cut one at a different length than the other one, all you gotta do is take your scissors, trim that off, and flip this, so there's that one. And we'll get this ready, and then we'll grab our next card bases. So that, and then two here. So there. And then this uses the green up and down. So just, I always like to look at it from the front because then I know I get my card, I know I get it straight. And then catch the back with the tear and tape and put those on. And that's ready to go onto our card base then. Now, so grab your pile. Here, grab the next one. So this is the last of the Rich Razzleberry. So now after this card, we'll be halfway done. So we're gonna fold this and burnish it. Let's go ahead and put our adhesive or your liquid glue, your tape runner, whatever you wanna use on that one and this will go on here just like that and you should have a white inside again I'm not going to stamp it I'm just going to set it there so that I know I have it there and then you guys will have another scalloped rectangle and a little label the flower you need from your pile of die pre-cut ones are this. You know what? Um, somebody was telling me yesterday that they used um, a brother scanning cut, and they uh, the scanning cut actually cut out all their flowers for them. I thought that was pretty cool. So it <laughs> took out all of the fussy cut work. So we're gonna put some. You know, I'm gonna save those for my label and trim these guys. that there and flip your little flower and let's get that prepped with some dimensionals that leaf that and that okay this has a ribbon coming out the sides of it I just realized that so we're gonna have to use tear and tape on the back of that too so this can go right onto your front of your card And grab your tear and tape. It's always right in front of you, right? All right, so we're gonna do two. And this needs to go, where is it? Hmm, <laughs> so, all right, difference here. On this card, I didn't cut out that white area, but I had Barb Collins help me out and she cut out that area right there. So. I'm gonna figure that out in a second, but I know I can put my tear and tape here on that one side, and we're using the tan. And I'm gonna utilize this gooey end here. I definitely am. So I'm gonna use that on a part that's behind. So we need a little tail. And a loop. So let's put our little loop like that. Little tail coming out like that. Cut that. And then I always use a second piece of tear and tape right away to go over that to hold it. And then on this side, I was trying to figure out how I wanna do this because of that inside being missing. So I'm trying to figure out if I want to see that there or, because ultimately I can do this. 
trying to figure out, I'm looking at this, you guys, I'm analyzing the situation. Um, because I want, if I go with a little loop like this, you don't really see the loop at all. So you almost have to have a lot of ribbon being used to see the loop out there to have that. So then I was thinking, do I have it come out of the leaf? And I might just do that. I'm gonna have it come out of the leaf. So I've got a dimensional there, so I'm gonna use that. And we're going to make, a, I think I'm gonna do a tail here and then have the loop come out. We're gonna go with that. So just a note though, you guys, side note, is it's easier to, on this one, not have that inside area cut out to have that ribbon go like that. So we're just going to work with this. You guys, all cards turn out different, right? None of the, none are alike. And so let's see once what this does. We're gonna trim him like this. And that'll be good. We're good. So I'm actually gonna take that off of here because it doesn't seem very sturdy. And I'm gonna actually put this other piece right over here like that. Okay, so then this is ready to go down onto our card front. That, that struggle was real on how I wanted to do that, you guys. <laughs> so we're gonna put that on here like so. And then we need to do um, a razzleberry sentiment. And my razzleberry sentiment is going to say Oh, my, what Carmen is doing is she's cutting her flowers while she's watching. And then she'll be able to put the cards together lickety-split, I bet. All right, a card to say hello. Mary says she does not like fussy cutting. So um, I totally get it. That's why I commissioned my note to um, somebody else. I just realized, you guys, I never took off... Um, my dimensional backs, did that ever happen to you? You're like, why isn't that not sticking? And it's like, oh, I guess I gotta take the backs off, right? So I have this last one here. I was gonna save this to use on here. And then this will get put on. Again, if you want to not see it, think about it. Or do you wanna see the little tail? So I was gonna put it so that I do see a little tail on that one. And that first one, I didn't like it for some reason, but this one, I'm good. So, all right, so that's what we ended up with. Again, don't cut that little area out if it's a little bit easier to do your ribbon then. Um, so that's the card. And then where the embellishments go, I've got a couple down here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got seven on this one. So you guys have a whole sheet, so you might as well go crazy with them. All righty, so this guy. So these are Gail's pieces. Linda said she thinks she had her had scissors cramp from cutting all the flowers. I believe it. I definitely believe it. There are a lot, you guys. I mean, and that's probably why, I, out of everybody who's watching, how many of you actually used that sheet of flowers before today or before this class? Did you use those flowers for anything? They're so pretty that you don't want to cut them up, right? All right, so we need this one and... Oh, ha, 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 I know what I did here. All right. So you guys saw what I had for Gail. And for you guys, look at how nice I was. You guys got whole pieces here. I realized that I had a piece here. And um, it's not long enough. But it's going to be long enough when we're done. So grab this card kit. The next one. You guys, these are all your insides from the Fun Folds class that we did with the shadow box card with the bird. With the perch in a tree. These are all the insides. So we designed a card using this flower for using the circle. All right, you have your little die label, um, inside, outside, and your olive mat or your olive card base. And the flower you need for this one is the one that was a half one. It was like the edge of the paper made it so that you didn't have a full flower, but it was a perfectly good pretty iris. And when you put that on the circle, you never knew that you didn't have a whole one, right? So this is your 11th flower from that sheet that <laughs> you had to use, right? All right, so let's, you guys, not gonna do my inside. Put that in the inside for now. That's what we're gonna do. Um, so 
this is what happens if you don't have enough designer paper and you have a card like this that it goes across, what you're gonna do is actually just take your scissors. And now what you can do is put one on one side and one on the other side. <laughs> and uh, you've got enough, woohoo, yay. So just a little tip there, you guys. Um, this is paper conservation at its finest only because I don't think I had enough of that sheet up in my stash upstairs. So that's gonna go here. Just make sure that the raw edges that you cut stay to the middle. And then if you do wanna grab a ruler out, you could always get a ruler, that always helps. I like to line things up. If you wanna measure it, see if you got it centered nicely, right? You could always do that. Looks good to me. All right, then this can go down onto our rich razzleberry mat. Ingenious use of the paper, yay! <laughs> it's always good. Use that paper, right? Find ways to use it. And then when you don't have a lot, but you need it, you guys, if you get to the end of your paper, right? So you guys have, for this class, you have all of this left yet, right? So you have enough to duplicate and triplicate some of these cards if you wanted to, you could. Or redesign your own, um, or like I should say redesign them to make your own patterns. And if you end up with something short like that, cut it in half, cover up the inside part. So <laughs> that works. All right, so let's use a little bit of liquid glue and that's gonna go onto here. All right, then you have your circle. We need some tear and tape. How much of that tan ribbon do I have left? Ooh, it's almost got ink in it. Ooh, not a lot. What else do I have here? A little there, a little there. Ooh, a little bit more there. We're gonna improvise on that one. Okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're gonna be close. <laughs> we're gonna be really, really close. So, let's see here. We're gonna need some waiting in the wings tape, I think. So we're gonna do that. And, okay, so right now the circle doesn't matter. So we're gonna have them coming out opposite ends. So I put them across from each other and you're gonna take your green first and I made a loop and a tail. So I have that coming out. And then we're gonna cover that up with tear and tape. And so on this card right here, I put two of those tan tails coming out just to fill it out okay if you want to do that you can do that um i think i might be conservative <laughs> and just put one coming out and i'm gonna flip it this way like that so again you guys you're more than welcome to put two on like i did and if you do what you would do is pull another one right next to it and have another one come out right but i'm gonna <laughs> save some of that for the next card <laughs> All right, so then across the edge, so I'm gonna put a, ta a loop and then the tail, so now they're opposite. So my tail's on this side and my tail was on that side. And trim your tail. I'm gonna cover that guy up. And this one needs to be picked off. And we're gonna put a little bit coming out there. Gonna trim that as short as I can. All right, before we glue it down, let's just see what it looks like because now's your opportunity that you can change it, right? So as long as you have them somewhat coming out across from each other, you should be good to go. So again, if you wanna put more tan on, put more on, but I really, I think I can get three more cards with that one. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna savor it for a little bit or I'm gonna go look in the drawer I might just go look in the drawer real quick. See if, by golly, I have another roll of that. Hang on. I 
don't. But you know what I did find? So <laughs> I didn't think about having enough ribbon for me to do this class, you guys. I'll be honest. I wanted just to make sure you guys had enough ribbon. But I did find this. And this is that natural finish ribbon. And that might look cool, too, coming out the edge here. So if you have this ribbon at home, you could always um, add some of that to it, too. So just another little thought. I'm going to set this here in case I need to use it, but I don't know if I will. So we got these ready to get popped up. Okay. So then put that somewhat in the middle. Cover up your seam. <laughs> Me, I should say. Cover up my seam. And then we're going to pop this one up. And I'll use a little bit of liquid glue on those. And set that right down in the middle. And then this one is Rich Razzleberry as well. So I'm just going to keep with my tried and true, a card to say hello. Grab your little label. I stamped that crooked. So flip it over. And if you want to, go for the other side. Much better. Okay. And then this one, he's a little bit different because the circles popped up. So instead of popping up the whole thing, I'm only going to pop up the two side areas. So I'm going to take a dimensional and we're going to put it along the bottom of each side. So that's going to be ready for that. And then I'm going to put liquid glue right through the middle because that'll catch the flower circle action that's going. And then Got that dimensional. I put the dimensional more like diagonal on the bottom so that it didn't hit the circle. All right, so that's that one. I love the irises. So pretty, so pretty, so pretty. Okay, so that's what it looks like before embellishing in Stella. And now what you can do is Stella your flower. And then I've got two here and I've got one up there uh, for embellishments. And then go ahead and um, do whatever you want on your inside. Okay, so this guy is next. And so pick up your cards, go to the next green base. And let's flip here. See what we got. So these are these trumpet looking flowers. <laughs> they are not pleasant to cut out. I will disclaim that right now. <laughs> so. All right, this one, now I'm gonna t tell you guys or let you in on a little hint. There is a die set called Fabulous Frames. And so if you are looking at your next card here, it cut out a frame. And when it cut out the frame, there was a middle. And this middle area, instead of doing anything else with it, basically took the frame inside and designed another card. And so that is technically, it is a die cut image. It's um, a die cut piece. You can tell it's got a little rolled edge back there. That is what's behind there. And then putting a stitch rectangle right on the inside of that mat. So very cool. Um, so the inside, you guys, is your white mat that can go right on the inside, stamp it, put it in, do whatever you want to it. This piece right here, you're going to need that to go onto the front of your card. that and then I did pop this one up with dimensionals oh and your flower put some dimensionals on the back of that and we can get all this stuff put down and then we'll stamp our sentiment this one though I did it in old olive so changed up the color a little bit. So this will go on to here. And then this gets flipped over. I'm gonna just use a little liquid glue. Just like that. 
And then this one, I got rid of the stem on this one. So I'm gonna just nip that off. And then I will put a little bit of liquid glue right at the bottom. And got that set. And old olive. So let's do this little guy. Grab the old olive. And we're going to do a different sentiment. Yay, we're going to get to a birthday card. Oh, no, this card looks like a comfort and strength kind of card to me. <laughs> All of these cards are so pretty and so versatile. You could do almost anything with them. So we're going to take birthday off and we're going to do comfort and strength. Put that right on here. And all those short little sentiments all fit in that short little die cut. All right, so then comfort and strength fits there. And this needs ribbon behind it. Okay, so grab your tear and tape. I'm so happy that when we did this, <laughs> we did the green as the main one. I think that is because it's a smaller. So the green is actually smaller, thinner ribbon than what the tan is. So we're going to have our little tail come out that way. Make a little loop, a little baby loop, and trim your ends. You guys, very little ribbon is being wasted on these cards. If you cut exactly what you're needing versus guessing, it's awesome. So then this little guy is going to come out maybe like that. And we're going to trim him to match. And then we're going to do this one like that as well. Okay, just putting a little bit of that ribbon back there. And now tear and tape. And dimensional time. So we're getting to the point where we're almost done to the, down to the end of our sheet here. So let's, oh, look at this. Here's one. Here's one. And we're going to cut this one in half. I mean, it's a little bit picky with the little back, this little sentiment, but definitely adds a lot to the card here. And then that's gonna go, it's gonna cover up where the flowers end. Oh, another one bites the dust. <laughs> All right, so that one's good. And to show you where I put the gems, I've got one down here and then two up here. And these gems, you guys, you could color them too with any of your blends to give them a different color if you like. All right, so. These two pieces are for Gail, so I'm gonna move them over here and grab this one and this one. Okay, grab your pile from over here, your last green card here, and I'm gonna flip that this way. Thanks, Betty. Thanks, Doris. Thanks, Cindy. Yeah, the pink and the green. I was a little bit uncertain about it, but it um it really goes good together. It's like olive, it's like old olive and polished pink. Okay, you guys again, no inside for me right now. But when you have time, stamp your inside, put it in. Uh, and then what can happen is this needs liquid glue. And Back just gets glued down here and the frame so you want to flip the frame over um, it'd be awesome if you had I'll be honest with you if you had I don't use these very often but when I do they come in very handy whoa hang on lost my cards I had dominoes going on all right let's get you back on track here okay these guys, I don't use them very often, <laughs> like the Cerveza guy. I don't generally drink, but when I do, I do, uh, the Dos Equis guy, that's what it is. I drink a Dos Equis. So 
These are great because you have nice long strips, right? So the only thing is that these are a little bit higher than other dimensionals like this. They're meant for like shaker cards. So they do pop up just slightly higher than, I'm just gonna go like this. But they work great. So this is just gonna create the frame border and I cut it just a hair too long. So we're gonna snip you there and might as well use it, right? Don't waste it. And this one too, needs to pop off a little bit. Right there. And then I got one right here. We'll just put that there. Okay, I mean, it made it really easy to put dimensionals on because they're already cut into the strips that you need. And these are called foam adhesive strips. So you get them from Stampin' Up! or through me, you know, through me, through Stampin' Up! if you want. Um, they're in my adhesive basket too. So if anybody ever needs them, reach out. I got them here um, stocked. So there's that. We'll peel this little guy off. And one more. There. Okay. So this little frame. You gotta be super careful, you guys. <laughs> you don't get much like second chance on this. It's like what you once you start to go and put it down, it's gonna go. <laughs> so I kind of like hover over the top and eyeball it. And just cross my fingers and count my stars that it's straight. <laughs> so that's it. You're just popping that frame on there. It's super cool because it has a little bit of height to it. And then the yellow, that's going to get glued right down in the middle section. Just like yo, I should say so. All right. Then you need a white flower. So let's grab the flower powers here. Must be, so we need that one for the next card. That one for the next card, that one, and then this one right here. I have extra white guys here. All right, our flower. So this one, I'm definitely trimming that stem off of there. And we're gonna pop up right there and at the top. And then a little bit of liquid glue at the bottom. Yeah, this one was really cool because it had the yellow insides and it matches, it brings out the yellow background. This one I think is one of my favorites, if I have to say so. All right, so we're gonna shimmy those down there. All right, the tag is right here. And that as well is also in Old Olive. So we're gonna do our comfort and strength. That can go right here. That might be it for Old Olive. I don't know. <laughs> Can't remember. All right. Then this one needs a little bit of ribbon. So that's what we got left of our tan color. So we're going to make it work yet. So I'm going to put two waiting in the wings over here. And I'll put that kind of not in the middle, just to the right of the middle. And this one's a little different. It's not making a weaving back and forth. It's just gonna be cutting. We're making just two tails on the bottom and a loop on the top. So something like that. But we still need a little piece of tear and tape over the top. And then we're going to use that piece already and then this one hmm <laughs> get two more cards out of that yet I bet all right and then this one I'm gonna peel that off and we need to find these guys so one two three and that can go right onto this card. So I think I'm gonna try to trim these. I am gonna try to attempt to trim these uh, just so I don't have that tan one. So I'm just gonna go a little snibble right there. Oh, that might be good enough. 
and then a little snivel right there. All right. Yeah, I want that bottom one too, though. Hang on. <laughs> Just a little bit. All right. That's what we got for this one. A little yellow and green action mixed with white. Uh, so this is what it looks without the gems. And then this is where I put the gems on this one. So you got one, two, three. And that's what we got. Cool beans. Um, all right. So the next card. So need to make these cards. Kind of wish I got the kit so I, all the thinking was done. Yes, Penny, definitely. But you are on the team and you do have this PDF tutorial. I haven't put it in the Be Happy Stampers team page yet, but it is. it was emailed out to you on Thursday, I think. So you have it all. You could definitely um, work on that <laughs> in your spare time, right? All right, so we're on to this. You guys, we have three left. Oh man, I'm gonna be short. So we're gonna, I gotta think about how I wanna do my ribbon. So that one, that, and what's this last one? Ooh, the last one doesn't have any tan ribbon. So I might save this ribbon and use it on this card. And then I'm gonna do green back and forth there and green on there. I think that's what I might do. Only because you guys, I don't have any more of the tan ribbon. So this is for Gail, so I'm gonna set that over here. And I'm going to grab out mine here and your next card kit. Guys, pull that out. So we're starting the purples. All right, so card base. This is some thick paper. I will tell you, it's just so thick. All right, so then here's that. And you should have a piece of old olive that is already embossed with the painted texture. Um, but yeah, Penny, that's the only sad thing is that you would have to all the extra bits and parts are would have been done. Yeah, so like the tags are already cut for you. Uh, the embossing is already done for you. The stitch rectangles are already cut for you. Yeah, that's, a, what, that's a, one of the great things about getting a kit from me is all that stuff is done ahead that really you guys just have to stamp and, and assemble. All right, so tear and tape here. And... I think, I'll be honest with you, I have more ribbon coming. So I'll be able to sneak some ribbon that back there for my tag. So I'm good there. But we got garden green here. So a garden green. You guys, I meant old olive. So that one goes here. And that goes here. And then... We're going to put this right onto our card base. This is what I like when you guys get your roll of ribbon. You really can see how little you have to use, and you don't have to overcut. You can cut exactly what you need. So that's going to go on here. The white, you guys, remember, I'm not going to do mine. I'm going to put it right in the inside and save it for a rainy day. And you have a tag here. The tag is cut from the tailor-made tags and you have one of these flowers and the tag, I have it popped up in the back with dimensionals. So we'll do that. And at another day and time, what I'm gonna do is add the ribbon at the top here. So how to do that ribbon though? What you do is you cut yourself about four inches, maybe five if you wanna be nicer to yourself, <laughs> five inches, and you fold it in half just like this. And then you take the folded end and you're gonna push the folded end through the tag. Get that little corner wedged in there. You might have to use a pick tool, but you put the fold through. Now, if it was longer, it would work, but you have the fold, and then what you do is you put the tails through, and then you end up with that loop in the front like that, okay? So again, I'm gonna do that later when I have, um, and I'm gonna, not take my dimensionals off up there so that I can kind of pull it forward. So we're gonna just take the bottom three off and then set that on here because I'll have the ability then to pull this up and do that later. Then we can put the flower on. I did definitely leave the stems on this. They looked very cool coming down the bottom on this one. So, 
I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on this one. And let's see. This one is in the purple ink, so let's do that real quick. Card to say hello is hmm. What color? <laughs> I can't remember, you guys. What was I doing for colors? Ah, oh, it's so long ago that we did purple. Purple is love and big hugs. Okay. <laughs> oh, you guys, there's a lot of cards to do, so you can't blame me for forgetting. <laughs> So Love and Big Hugs is going to be for this one. That one is going to be purple as well. So as long as I got my ink open, you guys, you know, I like to multitask here. So I grabbed the next one and put it back on the pile, right? That's all I did. And then the last one is also in purple. So me being me here, we're going to grab this one and stamp it. Because then I think... I don't need to pull the ink out again for the little labels. Okay, I just, all I did was there was stamp my three little sentiments. So, um, alrighty, Aphrodite. So, I was trying to buy myself time. <laughs> what to do? Because if I save this, it's enough to do the other one, whereas this is not enough to do this. And I thought about doing green. Oh, let's just do green behind there. Okay, then it's done. So I'll wait and do the tan at the top there. But for the green here, we're going to put this back there. And then we're going to loop. Let's go this way. So that, like that. And like that. Let's see what it looks like. If we don't like it, we'll take it off. Oops, wrong scissors. <laughs> that one's not the right one. Okay, and then we're gonna just trim. I think the green looks just fine. So what happens is the tan probably shows off a little bit better, but the green kind of matches with what's going on on the side there. So you guys just know that I did use tan on my sample card that's in the picture, but this allows you to use your imagination <laughs> and make it your own by changing up the ribbon. And we're gonna trim that. All right, so what's happening is this tag is popped up and if I put a dimensional on the side here, I think I need to do a double stack because the label itself is gonna be popped up here. And I'm gonna put two on that side. And then we're gonna cut one of these in half. And we need two. So when I say a double stack, I mean like an Oreo sandwich cookie, right? Oreo cookie sandwich, like it's double stuff Oreo. So. You got double the fun in there. So it's double high. And that's the side that hangs off the edge of the label. Oh, I think I left. Oh, what did I do? I put this straight, but I put... I put the label straight on the card, but I have the tag crooked. I almost feel like this should go... Oh, this is the dilemmas, you guys. I'm a straight down, up, um, straight down, left, right kind of person. So to have a tag on the front of this card crooked... It was a lot for me. <laughs> you guys can relate, I think. Um, so, but I'm feeling like that needs to go like that or does that need to go like this? This is me overthinking things, you guys. So I'm gonna put it straight because I like it straight. <laughs> you guys can put it crooked if you want or however you see it, right? So I liked the words being straight even though the tag is crooked. So I'm gonna have to put my little... Um, ribbon through my tag yet here. So this is what we've got without embellishments. And then this is what we've got. I've got like five embellishments on here. So now you know what it looks like. All right, that one's good to go for now. And let's flip over. Yeah, this one's gonna look a little different, right? So I have, I have here um, we're going to use 
this. I'm going to give Gail this. And we need this. Okay, we talked about this. That you don't have any of that pattern left because um, it got used and consumed in your big flowers. But you have this other purple. And then we cut that together as a group. So grab your second last kit here. And you have your two stylish circles. I've already stamped my label. I just did it with you guys. You have this piece goes on here. This one goes on here. And I just looked at this and I'm like, oh, that's a little bit too big. So we're going to we're gonna work on that. We're going to trim it down, I think. So you have a piece here. Look at that. You guys, this is the first time I've ever used this in a class. It's called like Painted Posies Embossing Folder. It is so cool. It's so much texture to it. So what you're going to do, let's fold this. And you guys, the white for me is going to get put away for right now. I'll do that later. Um, and what I was looking at was this white should be like the same height as that. And this, this one should be the same height here. And I wonder, you guys, we cut this together. Okay. So Gail's piece that I cut with you is right. But the piece that I cut for myself has a bigger purple margin. So I think you guys are good to go because we cut that correct. And I don't think I have another piece. So I guess what I'm trying to sell you guys is I had my stuff cut ahead and I cut mine is a little bit smaller than what it should be, but you guys are golden. You guys have here the, it's the right size. So you guys will be good to go. So I'm gonna give Gail her piece back and I'm just gonna go with the flow. So what we can do on mine, I've got a little bit more purple showing than I really want to. And, and I think it might be because my purple could get trimmed a hair here. So let's grab my trimmer out really quick and do this. Yeah, the thinner green ribbon is really pretty. It's very versatile too. It goes with a lot of different greens. So this should be, I'm gonna trim off a hair. And I'm going to trim off a hair. So if it was one, I cut that. Oh, I have it like a half, a little baby short. Hang on. So we're going to just do that. If you ever get paper and it doesn't look exactly like the margin or the mat is good, just trim it. Give it a haircut. All right. So let's glue these two things down onto the mats. So this is Highland Heather. We've just transitioned to on the last card. We moved to the Highland Heather mats. Okay, so this is good. And then this one goes on here. So like I said, you guys, we had to use a different purple designer paper. And then these get flipped over. And they're going to get glued. So the horizontal one is on the bottom. If you want to see it vice versa, you can do that too. But I've got this horizontal one down first. I'll put it right about there. And then this one will go on the top. And hopefully it meets your white here. Good. If you need to trim anything off, you can do that right here. And then this will all get glued right onto our card front. I think this is the first card that Chris and I designed together on this class. We went right for the purple. <laughs> all right, so I am going to cut this in half at an angle. So I have my angles ready to go. And this ribbon is actually underneath the white circle. And so we're going to do that first. And at the moment, it doesn't matter where you start. So let's just put one here because that's going to be the one at the top. And you want to get your green first. And you guys are really tried and true in practice now. So we're going to do a loop first and then the tail comes out 
going to cover that up and cut your little tail and Carissa had to cor correct me, you guys. She said if we didn't go for the purple, I wanted to do the purple first. So what she's trying to tell you is that purple is my favorite color, and that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> so thank you for clarifying, Carissa. <laughs> yes, but I still, wasn't this the first card we made, Carissa? I feel like this was the first card we put together um, out of all of them. I just, I had a feeling that, I just remember this one being first. So, all right, so we've got that going. And now what we can do is flip this over. And I'm going to kind of guess it's going to come out right over here. And you're going to do your uh, tail, your, your loop, your tail. So we're gonna, I'm just going to see if this is right. I'm going to cut it longer just in case I don't like it. I can pull it off. So I'm going to just set this on here. Okay, that's good. And then... It was first. See, that was all I was trying to get at, is that I think this was our first card. Where? Oh, there you are. Okay. And then this one's going to go, I'm going to have it come out more at the side here. And cover that up with tape. <laughs> you guys, getting down to the end here with my sheets. Uh, let's cut these in half. We'll make them last longer. All right. So we're going to do one two, and three. There's height here, so I'm going to let that be. And then this kind of goes right where the, the up and the down meets. I'm going to put it right, oh, sorry, on here. And then this gets a little bit of liquid glue. I want that one like this. Okay, I'm gonna go back and trim that one little guy here. And our flowers. So, oh man, I don't have enough to do all of these flowers, but we're gonna figure this out. So put one here and one there, one there, one there. Okay, we still have a half one left. And this one too, I left the little flower stems on hanging over the edge, so. Something like that. And then this little guy is going to get popped up. So now we officially finished the sheet of dimensionals. All right, let's see where do I have another one? Right here. Okay. See, ask, and they show up. Let's do this one. So I'm going to just <laughs> kind of cut these in half again. So let's just do this. So I'm going to do those three. Put that right about there. Okay. Um, for the top flower, though, if you notice, it's, um, it's hanging over the edge. There is a dimensional, but it's not going to be high enough. I'm going to put an extra little half back there so it sticks out. It's, it's like at the right height then. Oh, so Sharon says that she thinks this one is her favorite. Yay. So pretty. I mean, they're different, right? They both look equally as pretty. Um, that one has purple flowers in the back, and this one has the stems or the leaves. So um, for those of you who do have your own full pack at home, if you really wanted to, you could cut this out of one of your sheets, but know that you are cutting through one of your big flowers then. So got some iridescent rhinestones um, on this one in those three spots. All right, so last but not least. So these are Gales. We're going to put this over here, grab this base, and fold this. I'm going to save my white inside for later. And here's this and this. So I am seeing what I did to myself. Um, I needed a stitch rectangle for somebody, and I took it out of my my mat here. As you can see, it's missing. It's 
missing an inside, <laughs> but never fear, it will be okay. Because what we're gonna do is we're going to adhere. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue around the edge like that. You guys don't have to worry about this. You have a full white mat. I put, I'm pretty sure you guys have a full white mat. But I had to cut a little stitch rectangle out for somebody because I think something was up with it. So I'm just going to, my yellow is not the right size. Huh. I, did I, d -d 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 hang on, let me think about this. I wonder if that is the same size as the other one. Well, for now, I'm going to steal Gail's. <laughs> and give her, uh, I will cut her a different one later. So, I can do this. I'm going to just put this here, because you guys should have had this size. Okay, so, perfecto. That's going to go right there. So, I got to remember to cut her a different one. So, all right, now what we can do, grab your tearing tape. All right, Sandy said hers are cut out. Very nice. All right, so we're going to flip this over. This is a way for you guys to save on your mats. Like if you have to die cut stitch rectangles, and you know you're going to be covering up layers, cut out the middles. <laughs> and Because especially this too is awesome because here you use the ribbon to cover up the seam. So this is the only card where we technically did not use uh, the... Sahara sand or that light tan ribbon. This will go here. I got a frame. Took me about 10 seconds to realize why. <laughs> oh. Yeah, sometimes we don't know. <laughs> we got to put, uh, put the pieces together. All right, so now I'm going to do a little bit of liquid glue here. And then that can go onto here. And there, see, you never even know that there's uh, inside missing from there. Um, oh, we speckled on this one. Look at that. Okay, so we're going to grab out our speckling stuff <laughs> back from the dead over here. So get out of your pieces and grab that Stella pen. Hopefully you got a little bit of water left in there to put some color on here. But we speckled the back of this. Gotta be careful because it really wants to go everywhere. And I feel like I want more water. So, <laughs> oh yeah. Here, let's grab a little drippy drop of water. Okay. Now you'll get some bigger splatters. Oh yeah, look at that. So the water helps, it really does. So don't forget to wipe out your brush. Okay. Guys, we're on the final countdown here, the final home stretch. I think, what, what do we have? 3.23. <laughs> we did good. I got about 20 minutes before I think people are going to start coming to class. <laughs> so, all right. This gets flipped over. And a little bit of liquid glue on here. Well, that's a little crooked. Hang on, let's move you over here. And we're gonna trim off some of this purple on the side here. That'll help, perfect. Okay, and I did notice right here, something was up with my little white piece. I'm just gonna take and Straighten that out. There we go. Okay, so if that ever happens, you guys, you can fix it even after it's glued. <laughs> All right, so we need our dimensionals back. So I'm going to put those on. That will go right onto your card front. And then you can put your little flower. I already had two dimensionals on there. And I'm going to put a little bit on the stem right down here. And then 
this one, <laughs> the, this ribbon is awesome. It's just a little baby loop. It's not even a loop. It's just a, a like a little ribbon thing, <laughs> right? Whatever you call the ribbon things. Oh, okay. Let's see here. This side right here. And we're going to cut. So just fold the ribbon in half like this. And what you can do is cut. And that's going to get stuck where the tear and tape is. And then trim that little tail just a little bit. And a little bit more tear and tape over the top of that. Yeah. All right. We just need some more dimensionals. And I think what I'm going to do, go like this. Just put that right through here. And finagling these dimensionals. If you had the little baby dimensionals, you probably wouldn't have to cut them so small, but I was being very conservative. So then this one goes right about here. Whew, you guys. We got it. <laughs> so, stella it up, right? Do your inside. That's what it looks like without embellishments. And then what I got for embellishments on this one, got a couple down here, and then I've got one up there. But again, you guys, you have more. You, you have a whole sheet of them. You can use as many or as few as you want. No problem. So, oh man. <laughs> we did it, I think. <laughs> so, we got through all 12, you guys, and I've got just a few minutes here. We're going to do a door prize drawing, and then I think I'm going to let you go and get I take 15 minutes to get ready for, for my gals that are coming for the next class. I'm pretty much ready for it. Everything's sitting over there. Um, but I got by without even having to use this ribbon, which is awesome. So you guys have, you should have a good, good foundation for your 12 cards. If it, there's a lot, right? I don't think I've ever done a class making 12 unique cards in this sense and then cutting paper. I know we did 20 cards yesterday, but you guys, those were like very minimal in terms of mats and the die cutting. This is like an intense laboring class. <laughs> so I, I, I can't remember if it was Linda or if it was Sharon or who it was, but somebody said that they spent two or three afternoons already working on just this class alone. And Jean is exhausted just watching. So, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> it was a lot. Um, so, we're going to be doing um, a Ringed with Nature class. So, this was celebration product from July, August, you guys, um, that we did. It was a marathon day, yes. Um, so, just know we have six cards designed for the Ringed with Nature class that we're doing. And they're going to be two of each design, right? So six designs and then two of each. So you're still going to do 12 cards. And it's going to be priced the same way as this class was, um, with or without paper. I need a nap. I really do sanity, but um, I have class in 50, like 30 minutes, basically. And, and then after that, you guys, Tyler and I are going to be working on a project. We are going to work on our onstage. Um, so everybody who's on the bus or in the hotel with me, is getting a personalized gift. And where Tyler works, we have the ability to go in there and do the personalization ourselves. And so we have 72 of something that we're engraving with people's names. And so I gotta be over there at seven o'clock and we're gonna work on that for a few hours. And then I can take my nap or I should say go to bed. <laughs> so um, yeah, um, but you guys just stay tuned for Ring With Nature. I know I already have like six people signed up for it. It's going to be along the same lines where you can either get the class with paper or without paper if you have your own. Um, it's a $10 difference. And I have those, a bunch of this, the Ringed with Love, um, a lot more than I had of um, with um, the Wonderful World. So with the Ringed with Nature class, you're going to get a full pack of paper through me, not cut. I don't cut it down to six by six. It's going to be a full pack. And the shipping is based off of shipping a 12 by 12 pack of paper versus in a priority bubble mailer. So that's why I send them out as a full pack of paper. Um, but you don't get a stamp set because with this one, um, the Ring with Late Nature, there was no stamp set that went with it. Where with Wonderful World, you there was a stamp set that went with it. So 
I know, Sharon, I am the busiest. <laughs> my mom says I do not let the grass grow beneath my feet. <laughs> so very true. Um, so stay tuned for Ring With Nature. As soon as I have a hot second, Chris and I did like um, designed them, but they're not put together yet. They're, they have all bits and parts and they're all like the design layout is there, but they're not put together to show you them yet. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to try to have them done by next week. Um, so that class is um, not even on the calendar yet. Just like this wonderful world was an ad hoc class, you guys. So um, we we do as many, you know, we, <laughs> Carissa said she's going to do an intervention. She's going to talk to Tyler and say, no more new classes, only what's on the schedule. But <laughs> I don't know if we had that talk with Tyler yet. So, um, so Penny... Um, I will put you on the list for Ringed with Nature, getting your own paper. So we'll do that for you. Got you on the list. Perfect. Um, okay. Um, I have Sherry Everett on there already, Donna Gruski, Doris Monson, Shirley Malarkey. I have all you girls already listed um, with um, providing your own paper. And Carolyn Ketchmark, if you're listening, I have you on there for needing the paper. So perfect. Um, okay, so we're going to do a little door prize drawing real quick here for Wonderful World. So I'm going to flip the camera down and we're going to go out of here and go into random number, random, and I've got 52 is what our number is. So we're just going to do two and I'm going to hit generate and see what we get. You guys, oh, yep, you see my butt down here. Okay. 23, Sherry Everett, you are a lucky duck winner today. And then we're going to hit generate again. 34, Julie Biersbach. All right. So we've got Julie Biersbach and Sherry Everett, or who our door prize winners are for today. So congratulations to them. Uh, you guys, I don't have any cards ready to give out. I will have another set to give out on, I believe, um, I have the Sweetest Christmas cards or the Gnomes class, one or the other. I'll be giving away four more cards on Friday when we do stamp a stack. And then the other thing on Friday, what we're going to do is Top Fan. We're going to do the monthly class creative challenge, the class card challenge, and then we'll announce the winner of the YouTube challenge that we did. So um, Linda Hunt had a great comment there. Hey, ladies, don't forget to like the video. Thumbs up. Um, Krista says you can do as many classes as you would like. I enjoy designing with you. More classes means more designing. Yay! No interventions. Yay! <laughs> I know you were just teasing about that, Carissa. It was fun though. So I love designing. We have a great time when we design. We, we, we have another design day set on the calendar for actually probably Friday night. We're going to work on He's the Man. Yay! And Joyful Flurry. So Wonderful stuff, you guys. Um, I don't know if I have anything else. If you need anything, um, reach out. If you've contacted me in the last 24 hours, just know that um, I've had two back-to-back -back longer classes. My mom was here kidding all morning. I haven't been in my emails probably since yesterday morning. So um, if you've emailed me in the recent 24 to 36 hours, just give me a little more time because um, I got another class and plans tonight with the onstage gifts and then tomorrow morning. Um, we're making our team shirts for on stage, so Kelly and I are working on them. So I will, I'll, you know, if it if it's important, important, give me a call, right, and then text me right after. <laughs> so, but I'm here if you need anything. But I will answer all the classes that you need, or you know, answer any questions you have as I have a t some time permitting. So, all right, you guys, congratulations to the winners! Yay! All right, that's it for your happy hump day class with me, you guys. Lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you. If you 